Welcome to the third session of the I Can Transform series, focusing on digital transformation impacting the automotive business. We would like to acknowledge the presence of our senior executives from the AW Rostomani Group. Our honorable speaker for today's session is a passionate and highly experienced digital business specialist with a rich and diverse career path to date. She partners with organizations to help them realize goals and optimize revenue performance. She works in LinkedIn's newest business line, LinkedIn Sales Solutions, advising sales and marketing leaders on the value of social selling. She also helps companies to elevate their brand and drive results through social selling. Let's all welcome on stage, Ms. Leah Casely. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me. I can sincerely say I am delighted and it is an honor to be with you here today. Um, and congratulations to all of you. Just by being here today, you are taking a step towards being more progressive, more transformative, more digital in your professional endeavors. Mixed martial arts is literally the hardest thing I have ever done in my life. It's not the smartest career choice. <laughs> That brings me a lot of pride knowing that I can help expand human knowledge. I work really hard. It might come from wanting to prove myself. Being a rancher is not what I do, it's who I am. It's pretty simple, really. I'm living my life doing what I love for a living. Nobody in my family tried to take that leap of faith, so I decided to do it. My definition of success is changing lives for the better and living your best life. What am I in it for? I'm in it because I believe in science. I'm in it because it's in my blood. To crush it. To inspire. Because I love fixing problems. <laughs> to be my own boss. I'm in it to create magic. I'm in it to be a pioneer. I'm in it to do what I love. Whatever you're in it for, we're in it together. So just a quick agenda, what we're going to be looking at today is LinkedIn today. What is this network, this platform that we're talking about? The power of your profile, your presence on LinkedIn. The buying process, how that is changing as a result of the digital world that we live in. And your role as leaders on social. So. The network. Today we have 546 million members. This is the largest, most diverse professional network you will find in the world. We have 24 million members in MENA. Does anyone know how many members we have in the UAE? Any guesses? Three point five million. 12 million, so. <laughs> it's actually the most connected region in the entire world. Now, the other very important thing about the LinkedIn network is this part here. Two billion member updates per week. Now, if you can really tap into the intelligence that LinkedIn can provide you, this is what can help you stand out against your competitors. A lot of people will use LinkedIn to find those contacts, to find those decision makers, but are they really tapping into the intelligence to ensure that any activity is a relevant and timely one? And we'll explore this further as we go through. So how are our members using LinkedIn? It's a common misconception that people are using LinkedIn primarily to find jobs. Is that something that any of you have thought? It's quite common for people to think that. You sorry? Right, right. So actually, the statistics show that the majority of people that find jobs through LinkedIn are what we call passive candidates. So they were not actively looking for jobs. What you'll find is the majority of people, especially if you look at the higher echelons, the C level, are using LinkedIn for this last part here, for knowledge. They are following trends 
about organizations following um, industry information. It's a platform for publications. They are sourcing knowledge. The other thing that people are using LinkedIn for is their identity. Today, it is becoming more and more apparent that your online presence is as or even more important than your offline presence. Again, it's something we will explore. And then networking, to connect with people within the same industry, the same interest for sharing of information, for sourcing of opportunities. And then what do we do for our customers? Often people will say to me, but how do you guys make money? We have to make money, right? <laughs> um, and we have four main lines of business. One is talent. So we are helping organizations find the best people to fulfill the positions within their organizations. Then we have marketing. So helping people to advertise, market their ser services and products. Then learning, so helping companies to hone the skills of the employees within their organizations. And lastly, selling, helping organizations go to market with those products in a way that is in line with the digital world. We are very much involved with government in the UAE. Most of you sure know that um, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed is one of our most followed influencers on LinkedIn. Um, a couple of years ago, he posted an article and it became one of the most viewed articles on LinkedIn by a, an influencer. Um, the government are very, very keen to ensure that LinkedIn becomes part of the fabric of the government organizations. Um, and there is an effort to ensure that all government employees have LinkedIn profiles. We've done a lot of work with universities um, and other governmental um, organizations. So it, that's just something positive to know if you are using LinkedIn in this region. Another common misconception is the top guys are not on LinkedIn. Sea level or high net worth individuals that a lot of organizations are trying to connect with. Honestly, when I first saw this slide, I was quite surprised. Um, but you see there that the UAE stands as the place where the most high net worth individuals are connected socially. But when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. The demographic here is different. High net worth individuals tend to be younger, and we do live in a very transient environment where the <coughs> having of something like LinkedIn has become very, very important. So we've looked at that platform and how powerful it can be. We're going to play a little game now so we can, I can understand how well you know each other. Okay? Has anyone ever played Kahoot before? I want you to get out your phones and put in kahoot.it. You're going to see a number come up here and you're going to enter that number. See it there? 6615946. You're going to get one question that will have four answers. It's a multiple choice. You will select one of the four answers. This is a game of speed. OK? There is a prize for the winner. It's also a game of speed for logging in. <laughs> Who is a freelance writer? Felicity, Jose, Safia, or Paminda? Keep the answer to yourself, please. Okay, the correct answer is Felicity Stokes. So 32 of you got that right. Very good. So Hussam is in the lead, closely followed by Hala. And Felicity, you should have got that one right. right? <laughs> Who supports Barcelona Football Club? 
Amani Janaki May or Tony? 42 people are aligned with his love of Barcelona. Hussam is still in the lead. Hala still second. Hussam, another Hussam at number three. Who worked at Alpha Tame Automall? <laughs> Hala, Johnny, Zafir, or Girish? Very good. 40. Johnny, 47 of you got that right. Hala creeping up to first place. Hussam H, what's going on? Last question. Who studied at the University of Pune? Janaki Amani, Jose or Felicity? Janaki, if I'm saying that correctly. 51 of you got that right. Well done. Hala is the winner. Well done. Where's Hala? Very good. Well, maybe she's been using LinkedIn well. So just, just a bit of fun, but it gives you the idea. I had no idea about any of you before coming here today. And within literally a few moments, I was able to pick up some personal attributes, some pre professional attributes about all of you. If I'm meeting you as a customer, that can only enhance any conversation I have. Agreed? So moving on. LinkedIn has a lot of data, so I pulled some stats from the back end, and this is what I came up with for AW Rostamani. So 267 employees on LinkedIn. If we took the, every single employee's first degree connection pool and put them together, so your first degree connections, yours, 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 we put them all together, you would have 103,000 members that you could potentially tap into. The reason we think this is important, we see these as referral opportunities. If you were all aware of all your different connections, perhaps you're prospecting into an, an organization and someone over there is actually connected to them and can introduce you. Secondly, thirdly even, so 2,556, that is the number of people who view your employees each month. So those are branding opportunities. When people see a profile, that can be a trajectory to your company page on LinkedIn, to your website. And if we look at how you compare to competitors, you're actually number one. So 22 is the average number of profile views per employee per month. And then if we look at your LinkedIn company page, so a little bit further down, at number nine. But still not bad at all. Really, really good. There are so many people today on LinkedIn. The fact that digital has really become an intrinsic <gasps> part of the way that we live and the way that we do business. How does that affect the way that you work with your customers. So what the digital world has done is it's really given our customer power. What you'll see is customers are tapping into digital and especially social to get information on organizations, on brands, on products, on services. Today you'll find that your customer isn't waiting at their desk or at home for your salesperson to turn up with their glossy brochure to know something about the services that you provide. They will already know. They are already very much informed and will be formulating opinions, ideas, judgments on the different brand services, products out there before they even meet your salesperson. And because of the digital world, what you'll see today, it's no longer the larger organizations that are necessarily dominating the market. It's the quick, the nimble that are, are overtaking those that are, are slower to take off. So 
If you look at the process that a customer will typically go through when they are considering a product or a brand, there will be the awareness, the evaluation, and then the selection. So we did a lot of research into this, and what we saw was that 57% of the purchasing decision is complete before the customer even speaks to the supplier. So what does that mean for you and your sales teams? So if I'm a customer and I've been doing my research and I'm looking at Ford, 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 and someone comes to me and says, oh, how about Nissan? I'm already 57% of the way through my decision thinking about Ford. Their job is then so much harder, right? Whereas if you can catch me from zero, be engaging with me, really building a relationship and showing me the benefits of your brand as early as possible, that can only help you with that final sell. So we're going to go through a little scenario. So this is Peter, okay? So Peter's a bit of a volatile chap. He had a Ford and he just got billed incorrectly, so he, he, he threw his computer out. He, he just couldn't handle this day any longer. So someone mentioned to him A.W. Rostamani. So he goes online, he Googles, and he sends a message. Omar here gets a reactive lead. Happy days. Omar doesn't get many reactive leads, so he's very, very happy today. So he sends Peter an email. What does Peter do when he gets that email? He sees Omar's name. Any ideas what he will do? Yes. So he will Google him, probably. So he Googles him, and the first thing that comes up is his LinkedIn profile. So he has a look at it. And this is what he sees. And what do you think Peter's reaction is? He's going to what? He's maybe. Maybe, maybe not. It's not to say that Peter will not do business with Omar because of the LinkedIn profile. But as all of you know, business decisions are a conglomeration of lots of different things. Business de decisions can, in fact, be quite emotional. You go to a client meeting and you have your best presentation. You've been researching it for months and months, but you turn up in your beachwear. It doesn't mean that the client is going to think that the presentation is no good and your product isn't any good, but it's going to change their opinion of you. And that is the same as your presence online. Jeff Bezos from Amazon, you may have heard this quote, says that your brand is what people say about you when you are not in the room. Today, there is a lot of ways of people finding out about you when you are not in the room. So it's important that we take care of our online presence in order not to risk our business and also to take advantage of that moment. I always say to, to clients, if you were entrepreneurs and each one of you had a website, you would do all that you could to ensure that that website was designed to bring in clients and represent and promote your brand. Really, your LinkedIn profile, if you are client facing in any way, is exactly the same. This is a microsite. This is a slice of the World Wide Web that you have been given and you can choose either to leave it as an online resume or if you want to be successful, we recommend you transform it into more of a sales tool. As I said before, people buy from people. Becoming a brand ambassador for your organization can not only transform how clients respond to you, but elevate your brand in the market, which will help you with any kind of business transactions. So a no-brainer here, right? If we had to choose, we would probably choose the one on the right. So I said I was going to quote you. <laughs> so it was really nice for me to see um, that your director 
Salah, that you're very aligned um, with this way of thinking. And indeed, you are absolutely right. The way that we are doing business is changing. And you see here that you're saying that consumers have already advanced in the information decision stage before visiting a showroom. So if you can ensure that you engage and you have a solid presence online before that interaction, then your chances of a positive meeting are higher. We looked at this and we wanted to do more research into how is digital really changing the way that the customer acts? How can we ensure that we equip salespeople with the right techniques to navigate this new dynamic? So we looked at the, the number of executives that are using social to research products and organizations. Anyone have any idea what percentage that is? Percentage of executives using social to find information for business. How much? 80. 75. Very close. The other thing that we noticed, and this is very key, that your decision makers are not working alone. And I'm sure you've all come across this. So if you're dealing with an organization, maybe you have a great relationship with the CEO, the CFO. But typically, there will be other influencers, stakeholders that are involved in that decision. Is that something you've all experienced? And if you rely on that one person, it can make that decision-making process a lot longer or even not happen, or even the, the deal may not happen at all. We really want to help you to ensure that you build relationships with all the relevant stakeholders in an organization to shorten sales cycles and increase the probability of closing the deal. The other part of that is if you have an existing client and you only have one decision maker, there is a risk that the competitor can come in and take business from you, especially in these larger, larger organizations. So our advice is that you ensure that you are burning fires of interest throughout an organization with every relevant individual to ensure that wherever anyone goes, they think Nissan, they think Infinity. Yeah? Especially in this region where people are leaving, it's quite transient, right? Um, I know I've had scenarios where you're speaking to decision makers going really, really well, suddenly they disappear. What do you do then? If you haven't done the work prior, if you haven't built those relationships with enough stakeholders, you're then probably having to go back to zero, which is going to then take a lot more time. So how many people do you think are involved in a decision making process, the average? 6.5, anyone else? Three? What about here in the front row, any suggestions? Four, six to seven, that's the average if you look across organizations globally throughout industries. Cold calling, who's a fan of cold calling here? Yeah? There's nothing wrong with picking up the phone. I'm careful what I say here. I have literally had people walk out of uh, meeting rooms when we discuss this. Cold calling typically is not well received within today's world. Um, as I said, it doesn't mean you can't pick up the phone, but at least have some information about the person. Make it a warm call. So... Our research showed <coughs> that a percentage of decision makers do not <coughs> respond to cold calls. How many, how, what percentage do you think that is? 95? Very good, 97. So even if you are getting a 3% or a 5% hit rate, 
You then also have to think about what that's doing for your company's brand and your brand as an individual. Even if 5% of the market have thought that that is not a very professional way to reach out, or I did not enjoy that interaction, you are not doing anything to elevate and enhance your presence and the company's presence in the market. So if we just look at that, so previously, you would have had a sales professional who was connected to one decision maker. So as we saw, that is now around six or seven. In the Middle East, how many sales deals have more than one connection? Any ideas? 95? 19? 20%. What we see, only 8% of deals today in the Middle East have more than, than five connections. So knowing that, and knowing how important it is, we call it to multi-thread, to ensure you build relationships within an organization, you can really stand out from competitors. And to that point, what is the likelihood of a decision maker leaving their position within one year? One in five, 20%. So again, knowing that's so important not just to rely on one individual within any transaction. So what can we do to get from being single-threaded, just having that one decision maker, to multi-threaded? <coughs> you know the answer, right? Warm introductions, how do we get the warm introductions? LinkedIn, LinkedIn. from using LinkedIn, okay? From, we have created a concept we call digital selling, which is a bit of a buzzword, which really isn't anything so different to what we've been doing for centuries and centuries, which is building relationships to drive sales. The only difference with using digital is you can be more efficient, more effective, and you can do it at scale. And also, as we've seen, that is where our decision makers are hanging out. That's where they're looking for information. That's where you can build relationships with them. So some of you here may have heard of Sales Navigator. We have taken the best of LinkedIn for business development and created a standalone platform. And what that does is it helps our customers to ensure they get all of those decision makers involved in any business transaction. And that isn't just finding them, it's finding the best way to get to them. As Sami said, is it a warm introduction? Is it that I have a piece of insight on them that allows me to speak to them about what's relevant to them? So many salespeople will go to their customers, to their prospects with their pitch. Here you go. The customer is not going to engage with them. If I can talk to you about something that's relevant to you, there is much more chance of you carrying on that conversation with me. And that's what this aims to do. Give salespeople the intelligence and the tools to be able to find the decision makers, reach out at the right time. But most key for me is to have something relevant and timely to say. What I always say to our users, having access to LinkedIn, especially Sales Navigator, is like being invited to the biggest networking event in the world. The temptation is to use it as we've done previously and apply a more conventional sales approach. But if we're at a networking event, imagine you're having your coffee and I come up to you and say, hi, I'm Leah from LinkedIn. I've got four lines of business. I think one would be really suitable for you. You'd be like, uh, who is she? Whereas if I come up to you and say, hey, I saw that uh, session you did on Bitcoin, really interesting, much more likely you want to carry on that conversation. This is all about building relationships. <laughs>
created an index to measure how well our members are using LinkedIn for business development. So to create this link, to create this index, we wanted to really understand what makes a good sales professional. So we looked at these four pillars. One is they have to have a strong professional brand, right? If we looked at it offline, having a good suit on, the presentation, adding values to customers, finding the right customer and building relationships. You'll agree that if you do all of those, you would typically be a good salesperson. So we created an index that encompasses all four of those pillars. And this is what it looks like. So on LinkedIn, your professional brand is what? Your, but how do you, it's your LinkedIn profile. Yeah, exactly. It's your profile, how complete is it? Are you sharing content? Finding the right people. Are you searching through LinkedIn to find those relevant decision makers? Is your network relevant? Engaging with insights. Again, I always focus on this one because it's the one that people forget. Yeah, I found them, but am I reaching out in a way that's relevant? Am I talking to them about what's relevant to them? Am I following the feed and engaging accordingly? And then building trusted relationships, so enhancing the quality of your network. Um, what you often see in organizations is that people are connected to people within the same industry which is fine, <laughs> but if you're using LinkedIn for business development to enhance your brand, you need to widen that connection and think about who your clients are. So we're going to have another little game. There is another prize. Um, I want you to look on your phones and put in this URL. So linkedin.com forward slash sales forward slash SSI. And you should see a number like this come up. Stand up when you've got your number. Yep, stand up. <laughs> so if you have a social selling index score of 10 or under, sit down. If you have this number in the middle, if it is 20 or under, sit down. 30 or under, sit down. 70 or under, sit down. 75 or under, sit down. Okay, you three. What was yours? And yours? 75. 75. So you're the winner, 75. Very good. So anything over 70, we consider to be an expert digital seller. So amazing job, guys. What do you think this number is? Any ideas? Sammy, do you know what it is? No. No, it isn't. You, you wouldn't know what it is. So I'm really, really delighted and proud that we've been working together. So we've been working with a team from Arabian Automobiles for the last couple of months. And their social selling index score has increased by 60%. Phenomenal. Honestly, we don't see this. It's really, really, really good. So these guys have taken off at an extraordinary rate, really transforming the way that they're doing business. I'm really excited to see what comes out of this. I just want to touch on how, as leaders, you can really impact your company by using social. What you will find today is that many leaders who once thought that social wasn't relevant, wasn't for them, are now embracing it and realize that it is critical for the development and the success within their organizations. So what can you do? One thing is you create an executive profile. So your LinkedIn profile. Be the authentic face of your company. As I've said a couple of times, people buy from people. And if a customer can really understand who the CEO, who the senior leadership team are of an organization, that can help them to trust the organization. At the end of the day, human beings, we're quite simple. We're quite complex, but we're also quite simple. If we feel a connection, a human connection, 
with someone from an organization, that can help us feel more comfortable with dealing with that organization. Imagine you're about to go to a hotel and you get a message from the CEO welcoming you. I think most of us would, our impression of that brand would increase significantly. Maybe that isn't something everyone can do, but at least have a presence where if someone is looking at the organization, they can understand who's running it. Stay on top of the leading ideas in your industry. You have a very powerful platform that you can tap into to follow trends and follow industry ideas. Ensure that you are up to date as your peers are locally and globally with what is going on with your competitors, with your customers, with the industry. So what I always recommend is you follow your competitors, you follow your customers, and even follow the customers of your customers. And be where your customers are. So we be, if your customers are on LinkedIn and they are sharing content, engage with that. Reshare what they share. That's a really powerful way of you elevating your brand and also staying top of mind with that particular customer. So what can you do for the brand? You can really humanize the company. Again, people buy from people. Tap into that. If you're a senior leader, you can really be impactful in terms of the brand. Set an example for employee advocacy. As we were talking earlier, if you really want to transform this brand, if you want to get more followers on your LinkedIn company page, if you want more traction to your website, tap into the workforce. That is one of your biggest assets. Companies spend millions getting content out onto the World Wide Web, right? If you can have one of your trusted advisors who is a human being to share that same content, that can be so much more impactful. Think of yourself if you're looking at a feed and you see there's something from HSBC. Probably you're not going to look at it. Whereas if you see that Jane Smith said something about X loan with a comment, there is more chance you're going to read that. Connect with your customers and attract top talent. So to that point, what percentage of executives say they would rather work for a socially engaged CEO? Any ideas? 76%. So think about that. I'm sure HR is very aware. When you are looking to attract that top talent, they will be looking at you on LinkedIn. They will be drilling down to see who the leadership team is. And as I said earlier, perhaps they don't consciously make a decision because your profile isn't as complete as it could be. But subconsciously, all of these things are forming an opinion. What percentage of people are more likely to trust a company whose values and leadership are communicated through executive leadership on social media? 61%. So this can be really simple. This can be articles. This can be videos are great. There's an interesting stat, actually. Um, in the UAE, the most used search engine now is YouTube. So if you think about that, people don't want to read. So if you can get videos out there, people love that. And it will just help them to feel more familiar with the brand. And well, what does familiarity lead to? Trust. Again, we're very simple like that. If we see something enough, we begin to trust it. If we see there's a human being behind it, we begin to trust it. So what you can do, one is your profile. The other thing is ensure that you are a thought leader. You are experts in your field. No one out there knows what you know about the automobile industry. People are looking for information, so leverage that. So how can you do it? Your profile is, as we said, the first one. So just quickly, how you can optimize that profile Get something visually pleasing, a, bra a banner at the back. People will kind of skimp on this and think that it's not necessary. 
We have very short attention spans today. Ensure that anything that someone looks at is visually stimulating. Obviously a good photo. And then your summary. You won't believe how many people do not include a summary. This is your opportunity to humanize your brand. This is your opportunity to show that you are a human being and that you care about your brand, you care about your product and uh, to discuss what it is that you can do for your customers and your clients. Should this be written in the third person? Yeah. We see this a lot and you'll find a lot of agencies will in fact write for you in the third person. The benefit you have of having a LinkedIn profile is you are a human being and people will connect with you more and connect with the brand more. So really inject some personality into that. Talk about your passion. Why is it that you're doing what you're doing? This is not a bullet point list of your work experience to date for a recruiter. Again, if I gave you a website, you would want to get everything in this summary to really capture the, attentions of, the attention of your clients. Think about it in the same way. And then the other thing, again, on being visually pleasing, rich media. I'm sure you've got some great videos, brochures, presentations about your products. Get them up here. It's an opportunity for you to advertise. And then your experience. So again, when you're writing your experience, your customer doesn't really care that you were the head of IT for three years and your responsibilities included X, Y, Z. They want to know what you can do for them. They want examples. They want to be able to connect with you and understand who you are as a professional. And then sharing content. So if we look at this, so this individual is shared content. Okay, I want you to take a look at it. <laughs> so what do you think William Sean is an expert in? Right. It's that easy. In a couple of seconds, we get a sense from William that he is an expert in that industry. I would like to pull up one of your profiles and be and get a sense that you are an expert in your industry also. And that can just be sharing, resharing what you have on your website, um, whatever you read that you think would be interesting for your market, resharing that. So this is kind of a our guidelines, but really you can be creative with this and you will start to see the traction that you get from sharing content. But a third should be about your company, the other third, your industry, and then other interests. It shouldn't all just be about your organization. You want something, as you were saying, should it be more varied? You think of your customer. What is it that's going to capture their, their attention here? We spent almost all of our time on the phone trying to persuade people to, to meet us. And you know, if, if we're honest, they didn't really want to meet us. And it was, a, it was a very thankless task and used to consume a lot of hours. Um, I think the world has now completely changed. Um, you know, thanks to LinkedIn, I, I, I would say. Um, our, our customers, prospects, people we want to do business with are now effectively volunteering their information, telling us what they're interested in, uh, telling us, you know, kind of what makes them tick um, in a network that we can access in a professional way and uh, make contact with them and have, you know, genuinely meaningful conversations uh, for them. People talk a lot about the, the power of the warm introduction and, and as you build your network in LinkedIn you'll find that you know it's surprising how many people you know maybe not a, as a direct contact but one or two uh, removed from you and being able to use LinkedIn to uh, find someone you know who knows the, the person you're trying to contact is extremely powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do something today to benefit from what we've just... Uh, so, uh, from my side, I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to make sure that I add each single one of you to my LinkedIn profile. Whoa. That's the first thing. If you, you, what I suggest is, if I miss you, you do the same. But what I suggest as, as well, you go and add every single one 
that's in the room to your LinkedIn profile. So let's do that as number one, because we're the ones who are driving the change. So Natalie, this is the first step we can take. Second step we can take is there's so much going on and marketing as well as Gordon is creating a lot of collateral for us on video. We had the team building exercise, you saw that. These sessions are being recorded. There's so much content that's coming out on daily and weekly basis, video content. What you can do is take the link, post it, share it so that we can start communicating more. If we can set the example, we'll get that momentum going. What I will do is I've got a uh, basic uh, uh, premise that I work with. If you can't measure it, you can't measure and manage it. So today I learned one way of managing my profile is by looking at the stats. And that's where I want to go and start looking at the stats and see how we can improve those statistics. So that's the first step. So having said those three things, let's go out there next 24 hours and see how many of us are going to be linked to one another. What I'm going to ask Gordon is send us an email, Gordon, with all the attendees today because I won't remember your name, yeah, some of your names. Let's take it to the next step. Uh, each of these sessions, let's go out there, see what we've learned, and apply it. Thank you very much.